Hello, in this video I'm going to look at Create Capture in P5.js and how the Create Capture function allows you to get a live image from your webcam. So I want to talk briefly just about what the Create Capture function does technically behind the scenes um, before I start typing into the code and seeing the results. So let's come with me over here. Look, I'm over here now, hello. So um, as you know, a P5, I don't know if you know this, but if you've watched any other videos you do, P5 has these functions setup and draw. Setup being the thing that runs at the beginning of a P5.js sketch. And the thing that you typically have in a P5.js sketch is a function called create canvas. It is not necessarily required, which gets a width and a height. And what does that function do? It places a canvas in the browser window itself. So the goal for this video, by the end of this video, is to say, you know, your laptop, which has a, like, a webcam at the top, I want to see the image you know, from that webcam. I want to see that in the canvas. So the way that you can connect to the default camera of your computer, and anybody's computer happens to be loading your sketch in their browser, is with the function create capture. So the create capture function, and then you pass it one argument, video, what the create capture function does is it creates a connection to, like, I think it's called in web language, like user get media, something like that. But what, what it does behind the scenes is it actually creates a separate DOM element. DOM referring to document object model, this being the document, there being objects in the document. The one thing we created is a canvas. As you know, in P5, you can also create things like a paragraph with create P, you could create things like a slider with create slider, you could create button with create button. So you can make all these elements that live on the web page and create capture. Actually what it does is creates a video DOM element which contains the image from that camera. So on the one hand, this might be what you want. You want to have a canvas and a video element separate from each other. but in a sort of classic creative coding sense, whatever, whatever that means, um, you might just want to be doing some kind of animation or abstract visual art thingamabob based on what's in that video. So you don't actually want to see that DOM element, you just want to paint it to the canvas and mess with it on the canvas. So that's what I need to look at how to do with code. Um, and, 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 and we'll see in a second. But I think it's important to point out that Create Capture is actually part of the P5 DOM library and actually creates a separate element on the page. And so let's go look at that. Okay, so here I am back over here and I've got a sketch. I'm working just in Sublime Text today, running a local server um, and looking at the results in the Chrome browser. If you don't know how to do that, I made a separate video that I will link to that shows how to get that set up going. But you can use any, any web editor thing of your choice to do all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say create capture and pass in the argument video. So I'm adding that to my code. I'm going to go over to the browser and I'm going to hit refresh. And you can see now, there it is. The canvas is there and the capture is there. Now what is the resolution of this capture? Make it a little smaller. You can see that this capture looks bigger than the canvas. It's actually, my, I made my canvas 320 by 240. The capture, the video is 640 by 480. That only, I guess, happens to be whatever default resolution, the browser, the camera, who knows making, who's making that decision, but that's what you're getting. Now, if I wanted to change the size of this element, it's a DOM element, so I can use, for example, the P5 function size. Ah, but how do I do that? So what if I want to now manipulate, what if I want to manipulate, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought for a second. What if I want to manipulate the, the capture element itself? <laughs> I need to store a reference to it in a variable. So what I'm going to do is add a variable to the top. I'll call it video. I will say video equals create capture. I could have called it anything, cam, capture, whatever. And I can now also say video.size uh, 320 by 240. So now what I've done is I've created that connection, it made that DOM element, and I've sized it down. And you can see here. And you can see now I have on my web page, I have the canvas and the video. Hooray! So now we can start to do some more things. I said, what if I want to ultimately not see this separate image, but actually paint into the canvas so I can do other stuff on top of it? 
Well, one of the nice things about uh, working in P5 is uh, P5 has already set up the landscape of things for you so that this video DOM element can act just like any other image would act in P5. So for example, in draw, if I just say, oh, I didn't set up my settings correctly. If I just say image, my sublime settings, I'll do that later. <laughs> video, I like to have two spaces for the indent. You know, it's very important to me. My life feels very out of control if my indentation isn't working correctly the way that I like it. I'll take a deep breath. Move on. Okay, so if I say image video dot zero zero, um, um, and I do that, and now I hit refresh, we can see there it is. So I've got, now I've got the actual video DOM element, and I have the canvas where I'm drawing the video onto the canvas. But you can see I can do things like now with the canvas, I can <laughs> add other functions like tint. You know, I could make it very, uh, let's see what happens if I get kind of pinkish. We can see here, oh, you know what, interesting. Ah, so a little bug happened. <laughs> I'm gonna fix this bug. Um, and it's actually, there's already a GitHub issue file. So by the time you run this with your P5 in the future, this won't happen to you. I'm gonna just fix it by, um, by enforcing the size here. But what happened is uh, when I added tint, the pixels got manipulated and suddenly it went back to 640 by 480 even though it shouldn't, that shouldn't have happened. So this video is going to have a historical error in it which will get fixed. But I, in my code I was able to fix it by just enforcing the size that I'm drawing the image. So you can see that in the canvas I can do various things to manipulate the image itself. And while I was altering the size, I might as well see I could do something like, ah, let me make mouse X the width. And now you can see I have this video that I can kind of like shrink and make myself kind of like skinny or wider or a little bit skinnier. And you can see I'm not drawing the background, so I'm getting these weird trails. So anything that you can do with images, shapes, I could add translate, I could add rotate, I could spin it, I could shrink it, I can flip it. All of those types of things I can do with the video. And if I, it's nice to have this DOM element as a reference of what the original video looks like. But if I didn't want to have that, one thing I'll show you is I could add video.hide. So the hide function hides a particular DOM element. And if I hit refresh, you can now see that the only thing is the canvas and the video. So that concludes what I originally set out as the goal, which was to be able to capture video from the camera and draw it into the canvas. However, I must alert you to something that will trip you up. I should, probably should have led with this and not finished with it. Notice how it didn't ask me for permission. It didn't say like, oh, can I have access to your camera? Is that okay? What you are doing, if you took this sketch and uploaded it to your website, potentially, if somebody came to your website, it could automatically turn on their camera. You could take pictures of them and save that to your server. So typically speaking, what you're, the user is going to see is like, oh, can I have access to the camera? But some browsers, in particular the Chrome browser, will only actually let you do this if you are serving your website from what's known as HTTPS. The S being secure. So if you ever go to the address bar, in your browser, it'll sometimes say HTTP and it'll sometimes say HTTPS. If you're like on your bank's website, it's, I hope it says HTTPS because you need a level of encryption and security there. So depending on where you're uploading your thing, uh, if you're just working locally on your own computer and making whatever and experimenting, it's always gonna work. But if you're uploading it to your own website, you need to have HTTPS enabled. Some web servers might have this as a feature for you, like Heroku, I believe, if you're using that. That's a web service thing company. Others won't. Um, and so you need to like purchase and get a certificate. And maybe I can make a video about that if I even knew how to do that. But one thing I'll point out that someone pointed to me recently is there is something called Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is free, automated, and open. It's a new certificate authority, so that might be something you could look into if you need to resolve this issue in terms of where you're uploading. I do know, for example, though, that GitHub Pages, I believe, if you're using GitHub Pages as a way of hosting something, um, that I believe you can use HTTPS with. Anyway, uh, but also you could just not use Chrome and it might work in a different browser, yada, yada, yada. This will all be <laughs> irrelevant and I'm gonna have to dub the robots of the future will dub over me <laughs> and explain this correctly because this is all gonna become totally not relevant anymore probably a week from now, two weeks from now, two months from now, etc. Okay, thanks for watching this video. In the next video,
You know, so I would say if you're looking for something to do, try to get this to work, mess around, manipulate the video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to save snapshots over time from a live source.